Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson. I'm a freelance consultant through my company, Onyx Reporting. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Domo's tags, and then we're going to talk a little bit about automation. So what are tags? Um, tags allow you to go to a data set and basically add a tag that will help you search for it later. So let's say hypothetically, I know that my marketing data set has personal information. PI, PII, let's say PI. I can add a tag, or uh, I can add a, from a set of existing tags, or I can add a new tag. Um, in this case, I'm adding a tag called PI. Great. Um, when I save it, when you look in the UI, you'll be able to see, hey, I've added a tag called PI. And what's very powerful about this is I can now create a saved filter. I'm going to create a saved filter called tag is equal to PI. I can favorite it, and there we go. Now this is good, but ideally, any downstream data set, any data data set that you know is based off of marketing, should also be tagged as private information because there's nothing stopping there from being private information in these downstream data sets. And I think this is one of the shortcomings of the current Domo UI. There is no dynamic way to automatically tag all of my downstream data sets, but with a little bit of trickery and some API work, we can automate this process. So what are we talking about here? When I click on my data set and go into lineage, right, it does show me the impact analysis. It shows me everything downstream from this data set. And again, ideally, I want each of these automatically tagged with PI for private information. So I guess the first thing to understand is how do I create a tag? You guys know how this game goes. You go into your browser, you inspect the page, march over to network, and then you see what happens when you click the button. If I create a new tag and press save, I can see here, here's my query. Um, it hit the data sources, tags, API, it's a post request. And then the body is the list of all of the tags that apply to this data set. Note, the body isn't just the one tag that I added, new tag. It's actually the body contains all of the tags. Another thing that's interesting and that's going to possibly trip us up later is there is no response from the tags API, which, okay, I'm not going to get into it. I think that's slightly atypical behavior, but we need to code around that. All right, what's the mission? The mission is to be able to say, here's one data set. I want you to run an impact analysis to get all of my downstream data sets, and then I want you to automatically add the tag to any existing tags that are already there. That's what we want to accomplish in our code. All right, let's go through it. So to get started, um, I'm going to go to my index. To get started, you always have to get your session token. We are using public, undocumented APIs. Um, any API that is uh, your instance name.domo.com is going to be one of these uh, APIs where you have to do full authentication. I've got a tutorial about that. I've got documentation about that. I'll link that later. Um, so we go ahead and grab our session token. Um, in a previous video, I showed you how we got the lineage of our data set. Um, but let's take a look at that real quick. Like, So here, to get my lineage, I pass in my Domo instance and into my template string. Um, for traverse up, traverse up would give me my lineage. Uh, traverse up is false will give me my impact analysis. It will go downstream, which is what I want. Um, for this query, I'm choosing to return data flows and downstream data sources. Um, 
that's to give me a little bit of flexibility in some of the other uses that I have for this lineage um, function. Uh, but really, the only one I care about is adding tags to my data sources. Although I guess if I was clever, I could probably add tags to data flows as well. Another conversation for another day. Um, the result of this function The result of this function is an object. An object is not the same as an array. An array is like is 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 iterable. Um, I can say, hey, take loop over all of the objects in this array. Do the first one, then the second one, then the third one. Um, this object is not iterable in its current form. Um, Google it. Another conversation for another day. In any event, I have. Uh, a key value pair for both data sources and data flows. And like I said, I only want to apply tags to the data sources. So what I do is I have created a function that will flatten my lineage or convert it into an array. Let's take a quick look at that. So flatten lineage will take my lineage object and uh, take the object, convert it into an array, and then filter by the type. Um, and type can be data source or data flow. In this case, we're interested in data sources. Um, and then it'll also add the index, which I don't need for now. So I'm not going to talk about that. All right. So that will flatten um, my lineage object into an array. And then, because I'm looking at data sources, I want to augment this um, lineage which, with information about the data set. So I'm querying the data sources API, and I'm including all details. Um, Map over and then return the element. Da -da -da -da. Get data. Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry. Um, one of the cool things about this specific API is that it can um, query many like return results for many data sets all at the same time. So what we're doing here is I'm mapping over lineage flat. Remember, lineage flat has a list of all of my um, data sources. I'm saying, here are the five IDs that are interesting to me. And I'm passing it into get data uh, as the body. So it's an array of just the data set IDs. Um, You'll recall get data is a utility function that I wrote that basically is a wrapper for the fetch command. And fetch is how I get data from an API or any URL. Um, in my fetch command, I'm passing in my URL. I pass in my uh, domo authentication, my session token, right? This is how I do the full authentication. Um, and then I'm passing in the body. The body has to be formatted as JSON, so I wrap it in JSON.stringify. Again, there's a tutorial on this, which I'll be sure to include. Now, one of the extensions that I've made since last you've seen this um, get data function is I had to accommodate for the fact that the tags API does not return a response. It was a bit of a bear. But um, your response comes with headers. And I can ask, hey, can you get the content type header? The content type header will tell you what your response contains. Um, and so if the content type includes application JSON, then I want to run the dot JSON method over the response object. But if the content does not include JSON, you can't do that. It breaks. So instead, um, I run the dot text method over the response object.
in my responses from the tags API, remember there's no response of empty uh, an empty string. Response.txt is more than happy to um, call an empty string an empty string, whereas JSON dot JSON method was not happy about that. We're ahead of ourselves. At this point, all we're trying to do, sorry, let me go back to end it, is we're trying to get my lineage and we're trying to get information about the data set. In particular, I'm interested in the tags um, for each of my data sets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, map over flat lineage. Remember, flat lineage contains each of my data sets and kind of information about them. And the map um, function method says is functionally a for each loop. And so for each element inside of uh, flat lineage, so for each data set, I'm going to run the mini function update tags. And what am I going to do? I'm going to update tags with, ooh, let's call it uh, marketing, marketing, and PI, private information. And I want to add tags. All right, let's take a look at the update tags function. This is the new stuff, really. So the update tags data set, I'm sorry, the update tags function starts by getting um, getting the data set data. We've done this previously. I think I could write it more efficiently where I didn't request the data twice, but it takes a matter of seconds, so who cares? What I'm interested in is I want to know if this data set already has some existing tags. Because if it has existing tags, I want to remember add uh, marketing and PI to the existing tags. If I don't do that, I would remove all of the previously existing tags and just have marketing and PI. Remember in when we were adding a new tag, when I looked at the, the tags um, re uh, API request, in the body included all of the previously existing tags. So I have to make sure if I want to add just these two, I need to know what the previous three were. OK, so again, um, I've got some code here that's going to generate an updated tags array. If the action that I want to perform is to add tags, I'm going to say, hey, what are the new tags that you want to add? What are the existing tags? Let's combine them in a set. Now, the difference between a set and just an array is an array can have duplicates. So I could have an array that's one, one, five, four. A set would just be one, five, four, because it doesn't allow duplicates. So I'm using that set to make sure, hey, if my tag already exists, don't, put, don't try to put it in twice. Cool. If my action is to delete, if I want to remove a set of tags, um, I can use the filter to say, hey, um, remove anything from that new tags array from the existing tags. OK, that's going to create an array of the tags that I want to have my data set have. <laughs> that's going to create an array of the tags that I want my data set to have. And so all I need to do now is I'm going to run my function set tags. The set tags function is going to be the, the actual function that hits that tags API. We're passing in that array. That's really the easiest part of this whole thing is just like hitting the API. So the hard part is the logic that we have to do in JavaScript. But again, that's what I wanted to run through this with you guys. Cool. So I'm going to run our little mini program here. I authenticate, and it tells me, hey, you've updated your tags. Um, if I go back here into Domo and refresh my screen, I will see PI. I will see marketing. And if I go into my lineage and look at any of these other ta uh, data sets,
I have now dynamically or programmatically added PI and marketing um, to that data set. The whole point of this was in my data center, if I have one data set that has private information, I wanted all of the downstream data sets to also get tagged with private information. It makes them easier to find, but also if I have to manage PDP and dynamically enable PDP on all of these data sets, I just did a tutorial on that, go back to my YouTube channel, um, I can do that. You know, data discovery and data and data governance and domo are one of those things that we know we should do but we kind of like slip away from us and so my goal in this tutorial was kind of give you some tools to get started in automating that governance process if you guys need help with that feel free to reach out to me at jae at onyxreporting.com i hope you like this tutorial i'll catch you guys in the next one